So after a long break I'm happy to finally get my hands back on a super zoom camera. Today we will question the value of the Panasonic FZ1000 almost a decade from its announcement. Wow, I feel old. Believe it or not, throughout those years we didn't really get to see anything truly new in the premium super zoom segment. Just the new Sony rx 10s and Panasonic FZ2000, which I believe didn't change that much from the original one. So is the cheapest, oldest FZ1000 still worth buying in 2023? Putting a 1 inch sensor and 25 to 400 mm f2.8 to 4 aperture lens, spec wise FZ1000 is indeed still quite attractive. Without further ado, let's move to the performance, looking at some unedited JPEGs first. Its 16x zoom may not sound impressive against smaller sensor cameras with more than 50 times zoom, but actually, farther you go with the focal length, the less noticeable the difference becomes. And I can assure you, coming from cameras such as Coolpix B700 or Sony HX400, I don't feel like the experience is worse. In reality, it is actually more fun because of the quality. In the case of FZ1000, you get much more pleasing color tones, bokeh and notably this characteristic depth provided by the bigger sensor. For me, it was like re-experiencing super zoom cameras and I honestly couldn't picture myself going back to the smaller sensor ones after seeing this. The difference is just night and day. Out of the camera results are great, colors are very accurate and natural, the dynamic range is decent and the level of detail is comparable to other 1 inch sensor cameras I've tested, which means it's very satisfying. In short words, just a great all-in-one performer, excellent for family use as well as bird, nature and people's photography. Also, the stabilization in stills is impressive. No problem problems with shooting the farthest objects even at maximum zoom. Maybe autofocus could have been slightly more precise and faster, but frankly it is far from bad either. Though to be fair, this lens is not perfect. The sharpness reduces when increasing the focal length, so at 400mm and a bit below you can notice the picture gets slightly milky. Is it a deal breaker? I would argue not, because the results are still much better than with the standard 1-2.3 inch sensor camera. Anyway, keep this in mind, especially if you want to shoot in worse lightning conditions, this mentioned optical disadvantage would probably be exaggerated when increasing the ISO. Despite this, the low light performance in itself is actually quite respectable. I would recommend stay below ISO 1600 and you will get really clean pictures. In terms of the video recording, the edge of the camera becomes slightly more apparent. Don't get me wrong, luckily we have 4K30 on board, though sadly it comes with a pretty huge crop. Talking more specifically, 37mm becomes its widest focal length point. Also, the stabilization and autofocus seem to be working a bit less effectively compared to the 1080p. The stabilization is a bit jumpy and by the way you can hear it working in the video since it's relatively loud. On the other hand, the video quality in itself is quite decent. The level of detail, color accuracy and dynamic range are all there on a good level, so in the end the camera may actually serve you well, especially when recording farther objects. With the mentioned crop you get a reach of almost 600mm. Now let me say a few words about the handling and shooting experience. The lens housing is made from metal while the body is plastic, good quality plastic. Use composite has nice texture which is pleasant to the touch. The grip is fairly ergonomical, although with such lens capabilities you can't ignore its rather heavy weight of 800 grams. So to be expected this camera is not exactly the most comfortable one to use with just one hand. My only serious concern is the poor placement of the ISO button far from comfortable reach. Weird, because it's generally one of the most often used controls. 
The user interface, as you would expect from the Panasonic, is one of the most responsive, also the menu is fairly intuitive, though has a bit of information overload. But my probably biggest issue with it is that you can't set up video settings once and for all. You always have to switch the camera to the video mode, even for such a simple thing as recording in 4K resolution. When it comes to the screen, I like that it has proper articulation, also the quality is great. Even in direct sunlight I didn't have any issues whatsoever. That being said, I don't think it has a protective layer on top, so be very careful, it's probably easy to scratch. Even better is the electronic viewfinder in here, it's just crazy to me that the quality is still up to date even after a decade. Impressive magnification as well as good colors, contrast and superb resolution. In conclusion, I had a really fun time with the Lumix FZ1000. But the main question remains, is it still worth buying nowadays? Well, if you ask for some brand new leftovers priced at 500 bucks or more, I'm not so sure. But if you can find this camera for 300 to 400 bucks used, then it is a really good deal in my opinion. Probably the cheapest way to enter the premium super zoom segment. And I know, then there is also the Sony RX10 and the RX10 Mark II, but those have only 24 to 200mm zoom lens, which I believe on top of that also struggles with similar optical imperfections as the Panasonic FZ1000. That being said, if your budget can expand, I would definitely suggest looking at the Sony RX10 Mark III or IV, those have by far the largest zoom among all the 1-inch sensor cameras. I would also look at the Panasonic FZ2000. That said, I can't elaborate here since I haven't got a chance to try them yet. But if you would like to see one of those in my review, please consider supporting my channel with your subscription. Thank you for your time and see you in the next one. Peace.